Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'll be viewing episodes one and two of Bark Skins from National Geographic. So Bark Skins is a mini series that is based off of a novel that came out in 2016. And the novel itself is very, very expansive, but the, fir the first two episodes are dealing with expansion in Canada and then the European powers and that relationship between the British, the French, and the Native Americans, and just that conflict and what that, that ecosystem looked like during that time period. And honestly, I didn't know anything about the show or the fact that the show was even coming out until I saw a trailer for it like two or three days ago. And I thought I would check it out because I like this part of history. I always think these kind of pieces that deal with the gritty expansion of European powers and that conflict that created during this time period, how that plays out. And I think that they created a show. And I think they've created a show that really encapsulates how rough that time period was and the different relationships of the players involved in this area. Now, the first thing I can say about this show is that since it is being you know, created by National Geographic, you can tell that they really take a little extra care in showing the landscape, showing the cinematography of this area, because it is filmed in Canada. They focus so much on just the overall looks of it. You get a lot of landscape shots. The characters are obviously immersed into this wild wilderness, and I think that it almost takes on a character of its own. The actual land that they're moving across has its own identity. It build, builds its own atmosphere. You're in there. It creates such a tension. It's such an awe-inspiring look at this wide, huge, expansive, untouched land. I mean, there are some phenomenal shots where you're seeing out across these huge, dense forests. You're seeing these impressive rays of light shining through this dense forest. The murky darkness of some of the aspects. It, cr it creates such a wide variety of moods that can be encapsulated from this one singular location. And as far as the performances go, I think that some of them were actually really solid. We have some really interesting characters going on. You have a lot of different things happening on the show, and it jumps back and forth between different groups of people and how they're dealing with things. But I think that David Thewlis's character is probably the most compelling. I'm sure most people know him from Harry Potter fame, and he is a really solid actor. I have to say, in this role, you tell he's having a lot of fun with it. He's really embodying himself as this flamboyant Frenchman who's trying to build a piece of paradise for himself in this harsh, dense forest. And I love seeing you know, his relationships with other people. He's so over the top and he totally steals every scene that he's involved in. And I just think that his character is probably the most compelling of all of them. I love the scenes that he's in in particular. And I like the strength of a lot of characters. There's also a presence of some very strong female characters, which is interesting going into this new world. Obviously, you look at European powers at this time. Women took a backseat many times in their lives. And this one, you're seeing them kind of come to the forefront. They're very important in this new world because they provide essential things that the men maybe would not think about doing or be able to do on their own. And they dive into even more about expansion through reproduction. You don't think about that a lot in history, that... You needed to have lots of children to build these colonies. You needed people. And they dive into that and the complexities of that. And the overall just, you know, you watch it and you're like, this is so unsettling at times how they deal with things and talk about things. But you realize that, you know, this was a reality. And I think they stick to reality pretty strongly in this show. I know that it is not based on true events and these aren't real people, but they feel real. It feels very gritty and grounded. You don't feel like you're watching a romanticized idea of what this would be like. You're seeing more of maybe what the people dealt with and just how brutal things were for them. I constantly felt myself thinking about one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite political philosophers of all time, Thomas Hobbes. In his poem, The Leviathan, he talks about life in the state of nature. And he talks about how it is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. And you feel that. You see how these characters at any moment could have their lives cut short due to a whole number of factors. Because you have, you have this huge power struggle between the British companies that kind of run the things. They've been there earlier. They have an established network there. And the French settlers that are coming in trying to carve their own path through that. And then you have the Native Americans who've lived there forever on this land, essentially. And then you have that rising conflict and the alliances that are built there and how it's built on greed and just all these other things that are driving these forces. Some of these very, very primal things are driving these characters' motivations. And it really shows through in the performances. And I think the writing does a solid job of showing just how guttural some of these things are. And speaking of which, this show can be pretty grotesque at times. It's a pretty brutal. It starts off right away with a raid on a settlement, which is very you know graphic in its own way. You show a lot of people being hung, their bodies being pinned up against a tree, crows, animals, eating other things, creatures. It just gets very in your face. For National Geographic, I wasn't really expecting it, to be honest with you, but I'm glad they showed a more realistic take, a more gritty take of maybe what people would deal with. And I like that the show shows almost all facets of like the social structure of these early frontier settlements 
you're seeing the people on the lowest rungs of the thing. You're seeing people at the very top, the mercantile class that's kind of running everything and how it all works together and how people can try to carve their own destiny out. You always have this theme in anything that deals with, you know, expansion, westward expansion. You're seeing how people are trying to shed their old lives and build a new life. Think they can create their own kingdom. And you see that so much with these characters. You're seeing people that want to tear down this established forest in this world to create a open wide utopia and it says a lot to say about what human motivations are and it shows you kind of the early idea of what we felt in our relationship with nature and i think that's something that's going to build on as the show goes on because not to spoil anything but you know i've read a little bit about what the novel was about and you're going to see a huge scope and change of time and seeing how relationships are built in this landscape and I, i like how you see a little bit of foreshadowing if you know that in the beginning you're seeing characters talk about no one will ever see the end of this forest. It's just an endless supply of resources. And, you know, it's just something to be conquered, it's something to be taken away and used for profit or used for your own personal gain. And then you'll probably see a shift in how these things are affecting not just the people, but the world itself. So overall, I really did enjoy the first two episodes of this show. I didn't want to dive too much into the plot points of the actual show because I think it's something that you should really watch and something you could really just enjoy soaking in some of these incredible shots in this show. It's not wasn't something I expected to have such a high production value, and they got some solid acting to go along with it. I almost felt more invested in just seeing everything, just soaking in this really gritty and dark take on this instead of what's going on with the characters. But I think the interpersonal relationships and just the power structure that's going on there is compelling enough. But having that extra layer of just top-notch production takes it over the top for me. But I have to say, if I were to come up with one negative, there are the show does get a little bit slow at times. It does drag a little bit. I felt particularly in the second episode, it drags on quite a bit. I was really invested in the first episode. I love seeing all the different players be set up with their own issues, and they build this tension because you just you have this constant fear of something's going to happen to you, and just seeing how everyone relates to that fear and their motivations behind that fear. I just think it was exceptionally well done. Let me know what you think about it. You can actually stream it on Hulu right now. That's how I watched it. So if you don't have National Geographic Channel, I would definitely recommend checking out at least the first episode and see if you're interested in it. But I will be interested to see how it plays out because it's going to go very far in a different direction if it's following the novel. But I don't know if it is because I was looking at IMDb and a lot of the actors are in all the episodes. So I don't know how that would be possible if it's going to go forward a lot in time. But I don't know. So far, I'm intrigued and I can't wait to see more. So again, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and see you guys next time.